Hey, what's up guys? Zaya from Carnivore Detail and hoping you're all having a wonderful day just like always. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how to maximize your potential with a dual action polish ring and keep things simple and basic using the Chicago Electric from Harbor Freight. Now just like always guys, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe and also follow me on my social media platforms such as Instagram where a lot of my content gets put out on a daily basis. Besides that guys, let's go ahead and maximize your potential with the dual action polisher in today's video. Alright guys, so everything that I'm going to show you today is after your decon, claying process, all that good stuff. You want to make sure you properly wash your car, properly clay the vehicle, any kind of embedded contamination or fallout needs to be removed before you polish the vehicle because if you go ahead and polish your vehicle with all that nasty gunk on there, you're going to get it stuck in your pad and it's going to ruin your finish and polishing process, okay? So please keep that in mind. Everything that I show you after this point is a perfectly clean surface for you to go ahead and properly polish, compound, or whatever you're trying to do, okay? But the first thing I want you to do besides that is go ahead and grab a permanent marker or a Sharpie, okay? And what you're gonna do with that permanent marker, you're probably asking yourself, why the heck do I need a marker? You're gonna go ahead and put four lines in the backing plate of your dual action polisher, okay? And you see exactly why we do this in just one second. It's really gonna help you guys out a lot. After that guys, one of the biggest mistakes I see with a lot of beginners is how they place the pad on the backing plate. Now you want to make sure you balance the pad properly on your backing plate of whatever type of polish you're using, whether it's DA, forced action, or rotary, okay? It's going to make a huge difference. What you got to do is go ahead, you want to make sure it's not unbalanced. You see how that's unbalanced? Okay, this is going to throw off your whole rotation of your machine, okay? You want to go ahead and try to place it carefully and balance throughout the backing plate. Sometimes I use my thumb and my pinky and my fingers to go ahead and kind of guide my pad onto the backing plate so I have it even or pretty much even to the best of your ability. Let me try that one more time. It's a bit difficult to get it down the first time, so on the backing plate, okay? After that, you have an even rotation with your backing plate and you're set to go with your pad and backing plate, okay? Now, after that, guys, go ahead and grab a bottle of water. No fancy o &R, no detailing spray or anything like that. Go ahead, make sure your bottle's primed, and all you gotta do, try not to do it over your vehicle. I'm just showing you in this example. Take your polisher and bring it into the spray, okay? Don't spray directly, don't spray five times. Take your polisher and bring it in to your spray, okay? Now what that does, you're gonna have an even application of priming solution or water in this case to go ahead and moisten up your dry pad because this pad or any new pad that you get is going to be pretty dry. So you want to go ahead and put some moisture in there before you apply your compound. Alright guys, so after you're done with all that good stuff, go ahead and apply your solution on your polishing pad. Now notice how I applied a few dots on the exterior and then one in the center. I see a lot of individuals placing their compound or polish right here in the center and that eliminates all the surface area that you can work with on the rest of the pad. So try to get your polish on the outside and also on the center over here. You can also prime your pad. I've done that in a previous video. I left you guys a few tips and tricks in other videos. I'll leave those in the link in the description below. Um, but this is a very easy, simple way to go ahead and kind of prime your pad properly to go ahead and start the polishing process. Now, I'm going to place it onto the surface of the panel, okay? We have the slight crease over here. I want you guys to pay attention to the lines that we spoke about a bit earlier, okay? I'm going to leave it on level two. I'm gonna start my polishing process, but please focus on those lines in the beginning. I want you guys to notice something, okay? I'm gonna start right now. I'm gonna stop real quick, okay? Did you see how those lines weren't really spinning at all? Now, watch this. See the difference right there? That right there is gonna make one of the biggest differences, differences excuse me, for your whole polishing process. Because when those lines aren't spinning, you're not putting in the work, okay? You're just sitting there having fun with your dual action polisher, but really, in reality, you're not putting in the work that you want to, you're not getting the cut or the finish that you want to from your DA, okay? So you wanna make sure that those lines are spinning at all times. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that as well throughout the polishing process. Now, there's two things that you wanna focus on, okay? You wanna focus on the position of your hands and also your body, okay? I see a lot of guys 
they spread out their hands really far out like this, okay? You don't want that. You wanna keep it nice and close and tight with your body. It gives you the best control that way throughout the polishing process, all right? Everything from just a slight adjustment of your elbow to your hand can make a big difference on how your polisher reacts to the surface of the paint, okay? So you wanna make sure that those lines are spinning consistently throughout. And let me give you a great example. So the first initial concept I want you guys and girls to understand is that every single slight motion and movement of your dual action polisher is either gonna positively affect it or negatively affect it throughout the polishing process. Now everything from your hand position, your elbows, your arms, and even your body position are gonna have an effect on the rotation and oscillation of that backing plate. So I want you guys to pay attention. Even just moving it up and down just a few centimeters and left and right is going to negatively affect my rotation and oscillation of that backing plate. If you pay attention to those lines, they dramatically slow down, meaning you're not going to have the proper cutting ability, which is going to slow you down throughout the polishing process, and also your finishing ability is going to be diminished as well. So in these next few clips, I'm going to go over the important aspects of body position and hand position throughout the polishing process. First things first, hand position. I know this sounds super simple, guys, but it plays a big role in how you perform while you polish with a dual action polisher. I don't personally put my hand on top, as you can see right here. I find you get lazy and start putting too much pressure on the pad. I typically put my left hand on the side top of the dual action polisher and my right hand all the way at the bottom. So one hand, which is the left hand, controls the pressure while the right hand controls the upwards and downwards motion of the tail making sure that I can go over concave and under convex surfaces throughout the polishing process. Now you don't want both hands really close together as you can see here. You put way too much pressure and weight on the top of the polisher and even the slightest motion of your wrist or elbow can completely change the oscillation and rotation of your polisher that way. So keep a balance, left hand controlling weight and your right hand controlling the upwards and downwards motion of the polisher itself so you can have a smooth polishing experience and keep that rotation and oscillation going throughout those concave and convex surfaces. Now before we get into body position while polishing, we're going to go ahead and play a bit of basketball. I think basketball is a great example of how to use your body position to your full advantage while polishing your vehicle. Now here's that same shot in slow motion. I want you guys to pay attention to my elbow and also the, the way I use my body is not very fluid with the whole motion of the shot. My elbows are kind of flared out. I'm not very tight throughout the whole shot, okay? And that's why I missed my shot right there. That I kind of suck at basketball. But in this next shot, I keep my elbows nice and tight and consistent and fluid with my whole body throughout the whole motion of the shot and nothing but net. So I use my body and also my elbows to my advantage to go ahead and take my shot. Here's a slow-mo example of that same thing. Here's a replay of the improper form that I utilized. My elbows kind of flared out. Don't use my body to my full advantage and I miss my shot. And here's another perfect example of me tucking in my elbows, kind of getting nice good flow with my body and getting nothing but net once again. Now we're going to take that same concept we saw from our basketball example and apply it to our body position while polishing our vehicle. You want to stay tight and consistent while polishing with your body position, but you don't want to be too stiff. Just like a nice sports sedan, there's a tight suspension, but if it's too stiff, it's just an uncomfortable ride. So you want to make sure you stay tight and consistent throughout, but also comfortable throughout the polishing process as well. Another thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is body fatigue. If you're polishing a car for two, three, four hours, it's going to catch up to you. So what you want to do is use your strongest part of your body, which is your legs, such as your hamstrings and glutes to go ahead and support your body position as well. Me personally, I like staying tight, like I said before, but not stiff and getting up close and personal with my body panel so I can go ahead and control my dual action polisher over those concave and convex surfaces. Now here's an example where I start loosening up my body a little bit, moving my arms a little bit more and not staying consistent with my body position and it's a bit more difficult to control and I'm going to exaggerate this even more so throughout this clip. As you can see, I'm standing up straight which is comfortable but at the same time I have little to no control of my dual action polisher and the oscillation and rotation of that backing plate throughout the process. So. All this stuff you got to keep in mind, practice a little bit. Um, again, it's all your preference. Um, some people do it different ways, but you do have to remember that oscillation and that rotation of that backing plate is very important, so you want to pay attention to that. 
I just find if you kind of get up, up close and personal with the panel and stay consistent with your body position and use your whole body as a fluid motion while you're moving your polisher from um, the top part of the panel to the bottom part of the panel, whatever two by two or three by three section you're working on, your polishing results stay a lot more consistent and higher quality throughout the whole process. All right guys, so I really hope the basketball example helped you out a lot when it comes to your polishing technique and process. Now again guys, you wanna be comfortable when you polish throughout the whole process, but you don't want your arms and elbows flailing around everywhere in your body position to be all whack and everything like that. You wanna be comfortable but also tight, not stiff. There's a difference between the two, like I said prior, just like a nice sports sedan, you want a tight suspension, but the ride also has to be comfortable as well. So keep that in mind. Like always guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave a thumbs up, subscribe and comment below if you have any questions and also follow me and like me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, a lot of my content is put on there on a daily basis. Like always guys, thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of the day.